Hi, I'm Roger Ryan. I'm a music producer based in Nashville, Tennessee. However, I've been coming to the beautiful UE most, most especially. <laughs> that was cheesy. You can completely forget that one. I'm giving up. I just okay. want to go home. A Nerdism by Roger Ryan. <laughs> okay. I am a nerd. I was born in Trinidad and Tobago in the West Indies and um, my parents moved to the United States when I was about 18 months old. But my parents said that they heard all this music in the living room and when they walked out into the living room it was me playing the piano and I couldn't reach the pedals. So that's where this started. It started in my parents' home when I was about four years old living in New York. The world's so high and like um, I took piano lessons when I was a little boy in Tobago. My in first piano teacher was Mrs. Armstrong. Twinkle, twinkle, and Dr. Barry, Shirley Barry. She was the instructor that changed the trajectory of my college career. She was incredibly sweet and kind. Um, she was from Texas, Keene, Texas, somewhere outside of outskirts of Dallas. And she taught me piano, taught me how, she prepared me for my recitals. Twinkle, twinkle, my real star. gift is arranging. And so production is how I display my arrangements. And so uh, production became a natural flow or natural, the next step. Like a diamond in the sky. Um, artists I've played for, uh, Cece Winans, I was her first music director. Um, that was really a really great, cool experience, and it, it sort of fell in my lap. Um, I've played for Wynonna Judd. I uh, toured with her for almost three years. That was a really different and cool experience. I uh, had the fortune and honor to play for Whitney Houston. I mean, just stuff, you know, I, I worked on a project called Shirley Caesar and Friends. It was a duet project. Shirley Caesar is a an iconic gospel artist and on this project I worked the duets with her and Olita Adams, Kim Burrell, Patti LaBelle, Gladys, Kirk Franklin, Faith Evans. It was a crazy project. It was cool. It was my first Grammy nom nomination as a producer. Um, it was really fun. Um, eight, actually, but um, and I found out some of that within the last two years. In the sky. So the first Grammy nom, Grammy, uh, I went, it's 2004? I went to the show that that was the one that Prince and Beyonce opened. Cool. After they opened, I was ready to leave. <laughs> that was so enough, you know. But that day, I met BB like King. I met David Bowie. Because you know, you sit in the VIP section, so you walk down this. Cool performance was the show at the White House. I got to co-produce a show for uh, Bill Clinton when he was in office while I was Stacey's music director and I had the opportunity to co-produce the show with CBS and that was, that was quite a thing. Uh, 
um, Minnesota, um, the Minnesota Vikings stadium. That was pretty cool. Seventy thousand people in there. Um, it was the Billy Graham crusade, actually, and a million people on ABC watching this. Even if they were taking piano, you know, depending on their age group, you know, young, foster the gift instead of discouraging it. That gift is, you know, without being completely con controversial, that gift is divine. It, 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 it was given to them. And it doesn't mean that they will become a professional. The opportunity to at least explore the possibility is important. Um, I do this because I love it. Um, so I think parents need to, or I humbly suggest, it, pull back from what you want and see what your children want and, and foster those, those gifts. Let them go to work loving something they love to do than going to work and coming back home and hating it. Like, that's not living. So I would encourage them. I would encourage students, if they're old enough to make their own decisions, to go after your dream with reckless abandonment. Um, there is nothing like getting up in the morning loving what you do, no matter what the challenges are. And there are many challenges to be a musician, a professional one. Well, the, the first challenge is how do you make a living? Um, and, you know, most people default to teaching. Um, I wasn't going to do that. I wanted to be on the road or in a studio. Yeah, go after your dreams. Don't let people define you and tell you what you can or can't do. You know, like, just imagine no Elton John, no Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder decided to be a doctor. Well, you know, like, you know, that sounds crazy now, right? But just imagine these people, just press the minus, the minus sign on those people, like Elton, Billy Joel, she goes, Stevie, Michael, you know? Michael just wanted to do music, pull, you know, part-time, wanted to be a full-time musician, but you know, became a teacher, Michael Jackson. Like, that doesn't make sense, right? These people, you know, started to solidify and filter their dreams into what it became. And I think we ought to do the same. You know, thank you to Yamaha and, is it Thompson, right? For, you know, uh, facilitating this uh, meet and greet interview and spending some time with me. It was fun and um, grateful. Um, but I have had a wonderful time here. I was at the shop in Dubai as well, right? Yeah, that was fun. There was an open mic thing and I got to play and sing and meet some some young artists and, and some uh, established artists. So it was, it was cool. <laughs>